suggestions that uh, good you remembered phil very good thank I you remember yeah so i figured vacation you know get the cobwebs out you might not remember <laughs> Krista silver i don't see him greg johnson i'm here and chris is here oh is he okay yeah oh. okay mary brandley yes hillary i didn't see brian yeah. yes uh robert lowe uh he he's not here he's on vacation this week okay okay uh, Ch uh charles gabron charles is not here not a voted member jennifer right on wayne so jerry jennifer just oh. signed in and um i think charles gabron's in here too just so you okay know. but charles not a voting member so i'm not yep. so worried that was my mistake so but Jennifer, Jennifer signed did, did in. Just, yep, um, I see her there. Um, okay, good. Perfect. Jennifer's here. All right. Uh, Wayne, I do not believe is on. Uh, let's see. I'm here. Mark Anderson. I didn't see Mark. Anthony is here. Matthew. You're here, here, I think. You're here. Yep. Nick. You're here yeah. still. Yeah, they haven't left yet. Ken Newhouser and Ken's not a voting member. Never mind. Okay, we have a quorum. Uh, let me read the governor's, governor's statement. Pursuant to Chapter 2 of the Acts of 2023, signed into law by Governor Healy on March 29th, 2023, several pandemic related relief provisions suspending certain provisions of the Open Meeting Law, GLC 30A, Section 20, were further extended until March 31st. 2025. All members of the public are invited to join the meeting virtually, either by computer, internet, or phone, as noted below. If joining virtually, video and audio will be turned off for public participants unless otherwise stipulated by the chair. Okay, Phil, it's all yours. Okay, uh, well, the first item is approval of prior meeting minutes. Yes, yes. Perfect. I had just uh, a couple of, a couple of small edits. Okay, go ahead. That's okay. Um, so on the second page with community outreach update, um, the sixth item says the community forum will take place on August 19th, but we changed that to August 26th. Got and it. we also have it from 10 a.m. to 12 noon. And it says 10 to 1 there. Yep. And then on the next page at the top, number seven, Oktoberfest is actually September 30th, not October 30th. So that was it. Jeez. I'm glad you caught those. You're right. Not big. But... So at the time of the last Belmont Committee meeting, you know, that Saturday form was going to be August 9th. Right. Yep. So I don't know if we want to edit that or not, because at that yeah, but... point it was accurate. Oh, did oh uh, did we true. did we change it at the work we, meeting? Yeah, we, we yes. changed the Saturday. Oh, all right. You're right. Yeah. Okay. Then never mind. Yep. I, yep. I lost track of that. Thanks, Phil. So it well, was accurate at that time. Yeah, what was the um, Oktoberfest at it? Um, October is September 30th, not October 30th. Yeah, September 30th. That's right. I think, yeah, you're right. We did talk about it further at the work session and decided to do the 26th. Yep. So we have, so there's one edit so far the changing Oktoberfest to September 30th from October 30th. Got it. Any other edits? Uh, I'd like to call for a vote um for approval of the minutes of the uh july 10th 2023 uh green metal building committee uh as just edited which would be changing october fest from from october 30th to september 30th second and, okay thank you and let me run down my list once i find my list again there we go all right, so those in favor, Justin is not here. Krista Silva. Yes. Thank you. Greg? Yes. Mary? Yes. Uh, Hillary's not here. Brian? Yes. Rob's not here. Oh, you know who I left off? We have a new, no, no, no. I checked myself off. 
but we also have a new uh, uh, select board member, right. don't we? Yep, I'm here. You sure now? I, right. I was as of five minutes ago, put it that way. Yes, I, I, I saw you, but I didn't hear that, that Bostonian accent, so I, 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 I missed you. Uh, so Mike Stevens is present, and Mike, do you uh, approve or disapprove of the minutes? I approve. Perfect. Thank you. Both there. Jennifer. Approve or yay? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Perfect. Thank you. Um, I mean, yes. Mark Anderson is not here. Anthony. Yes. Matthew. Yes. Nick. Yes. Perfect. That's it. Minister approved as edited. Okay, Phil, back to you. Thank you. So the next agenda item is the feasibility study budget update. So since we last met on July 10th, um, no, no payment of any invoices, no, no invoices were put forth on the project. So we still got our $1 million feasibility study budget. We're still at paid to date right around 850 K. So remaining balance is that 150K. And then in terms of update on total reimbursement from MSBA to date, it's the $470,378. So right on the 55% reimbursement rate that the project has. Any questions on the budget update? Oh, I'm good. Okay, yeah, next item, community outreach. I'll have Mary take the bulk of this. The only edit I made to this bulleted list, like we just mentioned, after our July 10th building committee meeting, we had a, a community outreach subcommittee meeting on July 17th. But Mary, if you want to take it from here on all the ongoing she handling. Yeah, um, so I, I think I sent everybody last night the... Um... My, my notes as far as where we are and and what you know what the outreach has been in that so um I don't know if you want to bring it up or yeah I can bring it up yeah if that works for you yep so the the first item um that I wanted to to get everybody's approval on is the townwide mailer um, for the 5118 residences so we had put together, the um, the flat piece that we were talking about eight and a half by 11 to go out to everybody's residence. Um, I don't have a cost on it yet, but I guess it, you know, sort of we, we've committed to it. So, um, but I can send that afterwards. I had asked him on Friday, but I haven't heard from him. So it's Inc. Etc. that created it. And thanks to Chris, he also, um, Chris laid it out such that all the postal stuff can be in the middle um, that the Inc. Etc. needed. So, um, my, my question was, first of all, I just want to make sure everybody is comfortable with the flat piece. Um, he said, the Inc. Etc. guy said, the, the chances of people seeing it is better if it's a flat piece versus the trifold. It might get caught in things, and it's also more expensive to do it that way. Um, and they, so the timing is um, they need five to seven, Inc. Etc. needs five to seven days to print it and to put it into root bundles. And then he actually has to bring it to Acton because that's where his permit is first. And then he brings it to the Maynard Post Office all on the same day. And then the Maynard Post Office, once they receive the uh, parcels, they have to be delivered to people's houses within three days of receipt. So my question is, um, when do we want to send it out? I'm thinking that we don't want to do it in August because people, a lot of people are on vacation. They might end up with like, you know, mail being um, stopped. So they're going to come back and they're going to have a big bunch of, of mail and they may just toss it. Um, but I don't know what people's thoughts are, knowing that we can get it to people's houses, you know, within like a week and a half um, of him printing. Any thoughts? My two cents, Mary, would be, you know, if you target the end of August, like we're targeting for our Saturday form, I think that makes sense. Okay. And so they'll get to people like at the beginning of September. Yeah, something like okay. that. All right. Anybody else? Everybody think that's okay? Yeah, I agree with that. And I think it's probably also important to try to tie it in with obviously the other things to create the buzz. I and mean, that's what we're trying to do, right? There's, right. there's people talking and to get those maybe are not aware of things going on to get them interested so yeah 
Excellent. And there's still plenty of time again, you know, five weeks, six weeks before town meeting. So, OK, so I'm going to tell him end of August to, to plan to have them at the post office to, to then go out. Um, and then um, the Ink Etc. Is, is printing a thousand copies for us. Actually, Anthony and I used um, some of those on Saturday because part, uh, part of the order had been filled. Um, so he's doing that. And then if we need more, then we've got it. But I think a thousand is a good good place to start for uh, all the outreach. Um, thanks to Chris and Colleen, three big posters, new big posters have been they are updated and they actually show the perimeter of the old school versus the new, which was a, a question that kept coming up on Saturday. Um, so we're going to be using those for the different outreach venues and the coffees. And then there's just a, a list of all the activities that we've got um, going on. Um, actually, Jerry just added another one, which is Monday, August 21st. He's going to have something at um, at Oak Ridge Condo, which is great so that we can maybe draw on those. Jerry, I think I told you I can help, help you with that. Um, but um, so I'm going to be at the Boys and Girls Club this Thursday. If anybody wants to join me, I know 2.45 to 4 p.m. is really tough for people with work and that, but I'm going to be there. Um, they told me that the best place to be is at the Boys and Girls Club for their pickup at that time. And then Anthony's going to be on Saturday at the Farmer's Market. It would be great if somebody could join him because um, if you find if you're there by yourself, you miss a lot of people and plus it's more fun anyway. So um, I know I've asked a few times. I don't know if anybody can help them. I'm going to be away, to, away at a wedding, so I cannot do that. And I know Nick is, is away also, but anybody else that might be able to step up for that one? It's two hours. It's 10 to 12 at the Farmer's Market. Any takers? Okay, Anthony, don't feel like you have to do it if you don't want to do it by yourself. Um, but no, I, I can do it. No, it just it's, it's just that it's definitely because what happened is I know like at the library, the, the two times we've done it, Mary, is that one of us will be talking to someone and a new person will come up and be interested. And so now you're able to hit twice as many, twice as many people because you can't, you don't want to break off the conversation with somebody who's, who's already talking. That's the only, that's the right. only thing. Yeah, yeah. Actually, I can step in on that one. My my activity doesn't start till later in the afternoon, so I can Are do it. Sure, Nick. Minute. Thank yeah. you. Even if you could just be there for part of it. And the great thing is, you were there. You've been there too, so you know where we set up and that kind of thing. So even just from like the ten to eleven um, or whatever would be really really helpful. Thank you for that. How would we yeah, get thanks. the materials from you? I'm gonna. I told. Um, well, I can drop them off. I told Anthony I'd get him the supplies on Thursday. I can drop them off at either one of your houses. So okay. um, I, I'll stick to to Anthony since I, that's what I told him. So that's fine. I'll the table and the poster and, and all the supplies. So thank you for that. Um, and then the next one is Tuesday, August 15th, when we're meeting with the select board. I went online. I didn't see their agenda yet, but Greg, I'm sure it's there, right? No, it's not. I, oh. it, I won't post okay. it until Friday. <laughs> okay, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> so do you know when we're on and is it in person or zoom i mean i'm assuming people on the committee that want to be there can just do zoom but is the presentation meant to be in person or no i i don't have any expectations i, I won't speak for chris and mike though if if you i don't know with the board generally is like pretty open to either so uh, i don't know chris or mike do you guys do you have a preference do you have an expectation i i don't i don't have any expectation it's it's probably easier it's probably actually easier online because you have the opportunity to um, screenshot the information so people can actually see what we're talking about. Okay. Whereas if you're in the room, it's just going to be handed out more or less. Does that yeah. sound okay, Phil and Brian? It works for us. Okay. All right. Yeah. Excellent. Unless you want to come to Main Street. I mean, you know. <laughs> we'll be All right. there. And if everybody else wants to just be, especially on Zoom, if everybody just wants to be at that meeting, it would be helpful because, you know, there'll be different questions maybe that'll come up that we can address or everybody has a different perspective coming from a different direction. So I really encourage everybody that's on this committee to, um, to be there. So um, do, 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 do. I know one of the conversations is going to, because Dave Gavin has brought it up. I know other people have is the discussion to include information centered around the reasons why in addition to follow would not have worked or wouldn't have been more beneficial. So, and I know, um, Phil, you've, you've laid out some boilerplate, um, some bullets on that one. Yep. So, um, so I think that's it for that one, unless Chris, Greg, Mike, Justine's here too, if anybody's got any thoughts. Hi, Justine. 
Hey, Justin, good to see you. That's how you in the audience. Everybody good? And so do we know when we're on the agenda, Greg? What time? No. Thereabouts. Uh, well, I always defer to the chair who sets the agenda, but um, and uh, Chris and I haven't talked about it. But generally, the board gets kind of usually knocks out usual business first, and um, and so I, I can't say I, I don't I don't want to I don't want to. I, I, I mean, we, we're I no know. better by we're no better by the end of the week. Yeah, Thursday, yeah. Usually Thursday, Friday. Yeah, yeah. So I'm sorry, I don't know. I don't That's know. all right. That's okay, because we can just, yeah, just circle back. No problem at all. Yeah. Um, so then the next one is I'm going to try and be at the Maynard Library, the free concert, as long as the library, I have to okay that with them and just make sure that I'm not, you know, being obnoxious by just handing out flyers as people show up, because um, that'll be another good opportunity. There's a lot of seniors that, there's a lot of families that go there too. Um, so that'll be the 17th. And then um, school committee, I think, Brian, are we doing, is the, is the committee doing the presentation for the school committee meeting on the 17th? I had that circled, but. Yeah, we can do either the presentation or just update the committee. Either way is fine. What do you guys think? I think probably an update is probably all that's needed, right? I think they're pretty well informed at this point, but I think an update is adequate. Yeah, does that, are you guys okay with that? Yeah. Bill, yeah, yeah I, 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 I agree with Brian. I think an update is sufficient. Uh, I think the school committee has, you know, certainly had enough information so far. So that should do it. Okay. All right. And then um, Friday, August 18th at 11 o'clock, um, Jerry, Brian, and myself are going to present to the, um, to the seniors at the senior center. Um, so, um, well, we'll see what that brings about, but it'll be nice because the last time when Natasha and I were there, the conversation ended up being about Green Meadow, but we were more there for a general, just, you know, reach out to them. So this will be good to be able to actually present. So um, I'm not sure if we need anything up in advance. I'm thinking that we just go through, you know, the different steps of how we got to this point and that mostly just for questions. Um, Somebody, somebody at the library on, on Saturday said, I heard this building's only going to be good for 20 years. It was a senior that said, I was like, no, those are the people that don't want it to pass. It's going to last for 50 to 75 years. But um, so that, who knows? But I know most of what their conversation is going to be about the taxes, obviously. Um, well, Mary, it's okay for Brian to attend and present that night because he's not a senior citizen like you <laughs> and I are. It's okay, though, right? It's okay. All right, just check it. Okay. Uh, Natasha okay. wasn't either, and she was there. She was. Oh, good. that's right. Good point. <laughs> um, so they're putting it, and it's supposed to come out this this week. So I put it in the action unlimited, although it didn't come out. It always seems like I have to put it in two or three times before they grab it. Um, so I'll try again this week. But it's also in the pullout section of the action unlimited. And I, being a freshman senior, I actually got. Um, uh, they sent out a, a blast email. To people that I guess sponsor, you know, sponsor the uh, friends of, of Maynard seniors. So, um, so they're really being proactive about getting the word out, which is great. So, and then we talked about sports. So the first, um, the girls' first home varsity soccer game is on Thursday, August twenty fourth at four p.m. So we can talk about that stuff as it gets closer because we maybe just be at the front as people are coming in. The big thing is Saturday, August twenty sixth, the um, the community forum at Green Meadow. Um, Karen. Put, put it up on the outside marquee. Um, and then um, it's being, Jen is going to advertise it in the um, Facebook, Instagram, Green Maynard. They, I put, yeah, gave them the information and Orion Green isn't going to be here, but she was going to put a blast out to all those people. Um, Action Unlimited. I asked Chief Noble um, if he could put it on the electronic sign board. So we're trying to, trying to get the word out. Somebody's at the front door. Um, hold on. All right, back to it. Let's see. Um, and oh, so Brian, can can we send can we send a blast out through the schools or through your superintendent newsletter? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely, uh, we can figure that out in the next. That would be great. Week. And then Jennifer, I asked if you could send a note out to our database that we've been adding on to just to let them know about the event. They could do that. 
Um, yep, we'll get that out. And then um, let's see. The other thing was so the last time that we did it at the at the um, the forum at the Green Meadow, um, we didn't have an intercom system and the refrigeration equipment understandably was working. So people in the audience were having a hard time hearing. So I don't know if we can get uh, an intercom so that um, the speakers can, um, so that people in the audience can hear, but we need to do a better, you know, we need to figure out something a little bit better because that was that was um, a regular comment that people couldn't hear the presentation. So that's it there. I'll talk um, to, uh, yeah. Yeah, so I guess I don't know if, if we could use something from WAVM or or what, but if I'll um, ask them. Or I don't know if the refrigeration equipment can be turned off for half hours. <laughs> that might be the easiest thing. But um, but anyway, um, and then so we've got a couple of coffees planned Sunday, August 27th. Jerry is gonna um, join me for that one. We've also got um, the boys first home uh, varsity football game, and we've got the boys first home soccer game. Um, and then Saturday, September 9th from 10 to 12, Anthony and Jennifer are going to be at the farmer's market. And then, um, I've got another coffee planned. If somebody else can join me. I um, forgot to reply to you. Yes. I'm in on that. It's already on my calendar. Oh, great. Thank you, Nick. Thank That's you. That's the one on much. winter street. That's like in my backyard. Yeah. Perfect. 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 And I've got like three other people that I'm working on that are trying to figure out dates too. So I'll be coming back to everybody. And then we've got Oktoberfest, which I did send our application because they were down to 20, 20 sites available. So I just went ahead and I just put us on there. Um, and then the big thing is the special town meeting on, you know, plans for that. So um, additional notes, I did, I did thanks to, um, to Nick's suggestion, I did put a request out to Market Basket to see if we can set up in front of their, their space on a, one of the two Saturdays that are listed there. Josh Morse has been doing a great job of really um, telling people on a subject by subject matter um, why the new school is so important. Um, Jennifer posted his original video, uh, video on Facebook and Instagram. Um, Greg, thank you very much for updating the Maynard Town website for the full um, project website. So um, people now, if they go, because we were hearing that people couldn't find it, um, couldn't find a link from the town, a link from the town website, so they can now. And let's see. Um, oh, so then the comment about the, the seniors that they, they have an informal group that they're ultimately trying to get a petition at special town meeting to request 120,000, I guess a year to rent space for a senior center. So um, they're putting together information uh, for a petition and they're gonna include the cost per residence of the new elementary school. But we're getting that word out too. So people are gonna be fully aware of, you know, what the tax implication is gonna be. So just have to educate them on the positives of it. Um, just a couple of questions. Um, can we add, we don't have anything on our website or at least what I saw at the top of it to say, um, to tell people about the votes on at, for the special town meeting and also for the polls. Can we put that on there? I didn't see anything when I went the link from town town um, call to um, to our website. I yeah, think. I'll coordinate with Colleen on that. Can you and, do that? That would yeah, be really, really great. And also yeah. reminding people to get registered to vote if they aren't. That's the other piece. We have run into two or three people that um, weren't registered that I was able to give the forms to. So. And then the last piece that I've got, I think, is um, has the finance committee been told um, that we want to present to them at one of their meetings? And I guess I don't know who should do that. Who should reach out and ask them which of those two meetings works? I I I don't. I'm sorry if someone else was expected to speak. Is it? Oh, actually, is there anyone from the finance committee on the call right now? Oh, isn't Kate? Is it Katie? Is Katie on it? I thought I saw her. Maybe not. I was only going to say, coincidentally, I'm going to tonight's finance committee meeting, so I can mention it. Oh, but, that would be terrific. Yeah, so either the 28th of August or the 11th of September, because okay. the next one that they've got is too close to town meeting, so it, it doesn't really give them enough time to, you know, just just want to do it early enough for them. You said 9th of September? Uh, the 11th of September. Oh. Yeah, okay. that's at least what's on on their books, that, that that's, that's, you know, August, either August 28th or September 11th. Got it. Would be great. And then, um, yeah, then the other pieces are just prep, uh, preparation for special town meeting. 
Um, Dick Downey sounded like he was amenable to maybe trying to put the article at the beginning of the evening. Did you get that sense, Greg? He's yeah, see what he's he amenable. Do. I think. Yeah. Do I think you like that word, amenable? Yeah. I think he's probably just waiting to see what else shakes out. Yeah, yeah. But um, anyway, and then the, the rest of the stuff is just specifics of, of that evening, because again, we're probably going to get more than just the auditorium um, based on the past ones. So we need to plan for overflow into the auditorium and or the gym. So but we can we can have that conversation a little closer. Um, what else? Mary, I, I got a, a, just a couple of things. I think and the question goes to Mary and, and probably to Anthony. Are there any new questions? Are we getting anything that's different than we've sort of already heard or is there a different bent to anything that uh, you're being asked? Um, we've, I guess, no, um, is okay. from my experience, but then I'll let, um, I'll let Nick and Anthony speak, but the couple of negative comments that we've gotten, we've only got a couple, um, are talking about how we haven't taken care of the building. So, um, you know, and so, but I tend to think they might have been no votes anyway, but yeah. Um, but I don't know, Anthony, Nick, thoughts? Uh, it's the usual, it's, it's sort of the usual um, sorts of things I, that I haven't heard anything. Like, I think we're seeing the same things now kind of coming back, back around. Okay. I will say it was interesting to hear there was a resident in Maynard who is who works at an architecture firm and finishes and interior stuff, um, but was very it had was it applied to be a part of the project team to and didn't get it, and um, I I don't know if it was influenced by that or not, but they just sort of like you know oh it's a shame I, this should have looked like this and it seems like your your hallways are all like I wouldn't have done it and I'm just like you you don't get to say that <laughs> you know, speak as a resident not a designer. <laughs> Um, I didn't say it exactly like that, but uh, that was a different approach. As somebody who zoomed in the plans, read the plans, and asked programmatic design questions about why it was the way it was. And I was like, well, you know, if you've been following along, I didn't say that either, but um, I don't know. It was just interesting to see somebody's. Yeah. And, and it wasn't a, a, I think she was still very pro school. It was just, a, it was a, it was commentary. It was editorial. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, Jen, if you had your hand up already. Go ahead, Jennifer. It was completely for something different. I just happened to notice that on the flyer, we have a spelling error oh, under yeah. features. It says at there's we're missing the E on atmosphere in the second book. Okay. And that's, that's, the, that's the, the folder. That's the, the trifold thing that we're. Yep. Because I didn't give them the okay to do the rest of them. I mean, we got about 100 of them right now. But so where is it exactly? So it's on the um back or i guess it's the back page uh, or middle page um under new school features the second bullet okay we're missing the e on atmosphere okay chris could you update that and then oh uh, that's taken care of for you uh first thing in the morning mary perfect right thank through. you and then I'll, yeah Apologize so I'll, I'll um and we can send that off thank you thanks jen just happened to notice it so <laughs> I think Mike had a question. Yeah, um, just following on for, from the other questions that people may be coming up, the, the two that I have heard most frequently, one is um, the extent to which in the event that the, uh, the design is rejected by the voters at either stage, um, is there comprehensive information available for people to see about what the concept, what the, you know, the design, the process and the consequences and the costs would be for uh, the alternative, the, the renovation over the longer term. I think a uh, few people I've spoken to feel like they don't have anything like as much information about that as they, they do, you know, they can look at the, the, the design for the new building, um, but less about the alternatives. Um, and then the other question, um, and this isn't to discuss them now so much as just to, to have them available. For <laughs> the other question um, regarding sustainable uh, building approaches, um, does the committee believe that the design team um, is best equipped to 
to meet the challenges of working on a building that can um, approach a, a, as much as possible a, a net zero building. So what, what it, do they have the expertise to do that? Um, and th those are the, the two points I've heard um, by several people that I've spoken to. I think it would be prudent to, um, to have our responses to those um, as thorough as possible. Advice. Yes, Phil, I'm thinking that you're probably the one to write. Well, it would be Marty, right? To, I don't know how you yeah. address well, that. So the first topic, the the cost, if you will, of a of a base repair slash code upgrade, because it sounds like that's the the scope question, the first question, we we have a dedicated slide to that topic. One and two, it's actually on the the mailer. Um, so that information will continue to be in these these final presentations and and presented at a you know a solid level. Um, and then the topic of you know do we have confidence in the design team to execute what's already been decided, right? We already said we're gonna go do geothermal, so we're gonna. We, we said we're gonna achieve lead goal, we're gonna. Um, how we wanna present that, um, we'll figure out. You know, Mary, what I think what we can do is, you know, if it's needed to be get information to be given to you guys during your coffee talks, et cetera, I'll talk to Chris on what we get to you. Um, and we can figure out how we got to handle that content in, in the actual presentations coming up, what that wants to look like. Yeah, but yes, I agree. You know, to date, Marty has been a big part of speaking to the sustainability side of things relative to the HVAC scope. Um, I don't anticipate that changing. He's our subject matter expert on, on that topic. Um, and Mount Vernon Group can speak to, you know, the renewable energy side of things and the building envelope type, all that stuff. Um, so it's 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 um, content we've been speaking to to, to date. Um, I think the challenge has been because we went from one decision to the current decision that creates that concern. Uh, but so be it. We'll we'll continue to speak to it. And it, it does seem as though. From the people that we've been talking to with the outreach, when they hear geothermal, they're excited about it. So I think it was a good decision. They they seem pleased pleased about that. Anyway, that's good to hear. Yeah, I I wonder if um if maybe Marty might be able to you know put a couple of bullets or something as to how long he's been how long his company has been doing this kind of thing for schools that kind sure. of thing so that it speaks to his you know his experience. Sure. Yeah. Um, I think they've done, uh, Mary, I think they've done a couple of uh, geothermal projects in recent years, and the company Crowley, C.A. Crowley, has been around since the 60s, so they've been around for about 60 years. So maybe that's the kind of info that we just need to put out there to reassure people. Yeah. Sounds good. I thought Jen had her hand up, but maybe not. Anybody else? <laughs> One thing I'll add, you know, Mary, I think it was you, Mary, that brought mm -hmm. up, you know, in terms of new comments you guys are hearing, the the topic of the district maintaining their buildings. It's it's now in, in the process where that comment is amplified by the no voters. They kind of they kind of hang on to that till till this part of the process, till we're getting out the vote type thing. Um because they view that as their strongest argument to get people that are in the middle to go to know. Um, so, you know, that would be something where we would want the district, you know, I, I don't know if it needs the facilities director at these presentations, but, you know, we would want the district to speak to their maintenance plans and and, and how much that is, you know, what, what comes with that and all that comes with maintaining their buildings and you know doing the best they can, et cetera, et cetera. You know, having a response to that will be big. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. 
I know I've been able recently just because we've we've actually got present a presentation from our facilities director, you know, to be able to say this past year we we spent four hundred thousand dollars, almost four hundred thousand on maintaining the buildings, and you know, yeah. Um, so it's not like nothing, but yeah, maybe that's we can Brian we can talk about getting something. We can talk about that. Yep. Uh, yeah. And I think we can also use the high school and the Fowler building as examples of how we do maintain the buildings. I mean, I think that the makes, green meadow. Makes sense. It, it, yeah, we can do that. I'll, I'll take a second to go off the committee for a moment. I see Josh has his hand up, and since Josh is, uh, well, I'll let Josh say what his position is for his day job, and uh, he may have some comments in support of uh, maintaining uh, school buildings. Go ahead, Josh. Thank you, Jerry. Uh, so for folks that don't know me, uh, I am a major resident. Uh, both my daughters go to Green Meadow. Um, I am the public buildings commissioner for the city of Newton, Massachusetts. Um, but I was just going to, a couple things. Um, one thing is, as, as was mentioned earlier, I've done a lot of outreach on Facebook. So I've been dealing directly with a lot of residents. Just a couple quick hits. For the, the folks who have raised concerns about maintenance, one of the things that um, people, it, one of the things that seemed to resonate with people was I explained that MSBA's um, taken, a, a, or it, they're rolling out a new program for post occupancy. Um, inspections, certification, and part of that is um, taking a look at lessons learned, but also maintenance and maintenance of facilities um, and providing direct uh, direction to communities. So that system of checks and balances from the state level um, gave people a sense of comfort. So that's one thing that I've done. Um, the other thing on, on the, the uh, ability to pay for the project, um, next week I'm going to be releasing a write-up I did. I, I really dug into the 2020 census. Um, to understand from a macro standpoint where uh, you know where the finances are per household, um, what the cost of living looks like for Maynard, the number of people that are uh, that are potentially eligible for the tax deferral and abatement programs, um, as well as a description of those programs, trying to make sure that people understand that um, for those that qualify, it can actually have a greater impact than the increase in taxes that would result from the Green Meadow project. Um, I've been working directly, giving information directly to uh, Deb and others uh, who are organizing for the senior center. Um, so I think that that's been helpful as well. Uh, so I just wanted to highlight a couple of the things that, that I'm working on. I also had a write-up, Mary, I sent it to you. I was asked about the Fowler and why Fowler was not a good solution. Um, so I, I wrote that up. Feel free to share it with whomever you like. Just my take, looking at it with a, a, a neutral set of eyes, um, and then lastly on the sustainability front, I would say that you know design teams, any design team that uh, that partners with any community that is working with MSBA is fully capable of building a net zero school. They wouldn't, they would not do business with somebody that's not. Um, these are, you know, you have a great team here, just like any community working on a school project of this size. Um, but as with any design team, there are decisions that get made along the way, um, and those decisions change, and they're informed by that public process. And in this case, uh, the public process delivered a change in the plan uh, to look at a more energy efficient building. And as such, the design team pivoted to respond to the client. Um, that's not a question of their ability. It's just responding to the client and doing what, uh, what Maynard would like. Thank you, Josh. Thank you. I think that's all I've got, unless anybody else. I don't think the outreach project timeline, I guess, uh, at this yep. point. So, um, like Mary mentioned, next Tuesday, August 15th, we got the select board presentation. Next Thursday, the 17th, we got the school committee update. Saturday, August 26, 10 a.m., we got the community forum at Green Meadow, um, either August 29th or September 11th for the finance committee presentation. And then the two votes, October 10th for the special town meeting and then November 7th for the debt exclusion vote. Is there any new business or uh, any other business that we need to attend to that anybody might have?
Oh, quiet. Oh, it's summertime. People's heads are still on vacation. Looks like Ken has a question. Oh, Ken. Has, oh, hi, Ken. Yeah. I didn't see you there earlier. Sorry about that. Well, I, I wasn't here. That's why I you couldn't see you. You snuck in. Yeah. Um, so it, I was speaking with some other folks about um, the, this idea. So I'm bringing it up now in new business. Um, whether we have a mechanism for folks on the committee to review the design and provide input or, or questions in a way that's not going to bog down these meetings here. So do we have a mechanism for collecting questions and comments? And then maybe the design team could address them as, as part of the meeting, but we don't have to have a whole lot of back and forth among the full committee on each one. Yeah, so I mean, I think we've proven that we do have that, right? Like, so the, the Maynard Sustainability Committee sent a, a few documents that had a bunch of questions that needed to be responded to. That process happened. Um, it can continue to happen to whatever extent it needs to. And, uh, you know, I would agree doing it kind of offline, if you will, and then presenting the big picture update to the committee, the building committee, uh, makes complete sense. But yeah, no, that that um, that's a mechanism that exists. And it, yeah, and it has existed. Phil, and I, I think it's worked pretty well, but I'm thinking of not wanting to overburden the design team with having letters come in from different places. If there was, I, I don't know whether it's a, a Google Doc or something similar to like a uh, ANSI kind of process of accepting a standard where there's public comments coming in for a period and then they're they're batched and dealt with. Um, I just, you know, folks want to know what it, what is the way you want to receive input and what's going to be most most efficient for the team. And I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll let Phil and Chris probably answer that one, but I mean, we, we can resort back to what we were doing, send the document to me, I forward it off then to the design team, uh, to Phil and the, and the, and the design team. Uh, but, you know, valid point uh, you bring up, Ken, about, uh, you know, other, you know, ANSI standards and things of that sort have a public comment period and the comments could be submitted to a, a specific address. Uh, certainly a way of doing it. Uh, Phil, any, uh, Chris, any good thoughts on that one to make it more expeditious? Yeah, well, I mean, uh, yes, we can set up a project email address that, you know, the public has access to. They can send their, you know, their questions via email to that email address. We can route it to you, Jerry, and, and you can send it to me and Chris, and we can, we'll figure out what we maintain relative to some type of response log, what have you. Um, I know, you know, the, the, the FAQ that's currently on the project website, the the root of that is essentially, you know, questions that we are seeing, we, we saw come in that seem to be pretty consistent, pretty mm -hmm. frequent. Um, and, and those are posted on the project website. So uh, any any further questions that are brought forth, you know, we would put them on that FAQ as well. So people can use that as a resource. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I think the uh, FAQ is a good way of filtering it down to the to frequent ones and that you know, the NC process would be, um, I guess it's EQA, every question asked you know, has a, is posted up there. And that's, we probably don't want to do that on our website, but there might be some other mechanism for doing that. Yeah. Okay, that's all, right. all I have. All right, good. Thank you, Ken. And Phil, I'll chat with you maybe tomorrow so for a few minutes and we'll figure out the best way to, to make it as easy as and efficient as we possibly can for everybody. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, anything else under other business, new business? I would certainly at this point, if there are no further questions at this moment, I would entertain uh, a motion can we set up? Can we set up oh, another time, uh, another next meeting? meeting? Next meeting, you're right. You're right. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Completely. Forgot. You're 100 right, Mary. Yep. Look at the calendar.
So it looks like September 4th. It's Labor Day. It's four weeks, so that's Labor Day. Can we do um, it the following day and a Tuesday? I'm gonna I'm gonna be gone the following week. Not that I'm all that important, but yes, you are. So you're saying Tuesday, September 12th? If uh, or Tuesday, yeah. September 5th, even. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. If, if that works for people. It works. That'll be a long night for Chris and myself, but I think we can probably manage. It's no problem. That work for everybody? I think so. I'm good. Yeah, it works. All right. So for Tuesday, September 5th at 5. Perfect. Thank you. And, and, and thank you, Mary, for remembering that. It's one of the things I constantly forget. I just keep thinking we don't want to begin with the next month. And I think about the date. So now it's Tuesday the 5th. Perfect. Perfect. Um, any other issues that we need to address at the moment? Otherwise, I will uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. I can make that motion. Mary? Second. Who second is that? Is that Chris? Chris, I think, yeah. Thank you. Okay. All in favor, I'm going to do by a roll call. Uh, Chris De Silva. Yes. Craig. Yeah. Mary. Yes. Hillary's not here. Brian. Brian's still on? Brian you, may have dropped off. Might have dropped off. Um, Mike Stevens. Did I hear you, Mike? Yes? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, Rob is not here. Jennifer? Yes. Uh, Katie, I'm a yes. Mark Anderson, uh, not on. Anthony? Yes. Matthew? Yes. Nick? Just my arm, sure. Yes. Oh, very good, very good, very good. Uh, those are all the voting members. That is a uh, uh, unanimous vote to adjourn. If nobody has anything else, enjoy your dinner this evening. Thank you. Thank you too. And Thanks, hopefully, the weather, hopefully the weather gets better.